these are the eyes of the plane when you fly IFR. Saab 2000 is equipped with an engine which is producing 4000 horsepower. I think you are not that far from starting reproducing subs from the scratch. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Konstantin Fetchenko, KSE Avia, your aviation advisor. Today we have an excellent opportunity to stay inside Saab maintenance facility in Orebro, Sweden. Stay tuned on my channel and I will show you the process of upgrading or downgrading of an aeroplane from a VIP configuration to a cargo version and we will have a lot of insights towards the maintenance details in this vlog. These are the eyes of the plane when you fly IFR, when you need to see the weather in front of you, the weather radar. It's tilting up, down, left, right. The signal is going back and forth through this plexiglass. And it has to be painted with a special paint, not whatever you want. And this is a bird catcher or any heavy objects which enter the air intake they supposed to go down there and the air into the engine goes up and this is how that thing looks like from the side this goes into the engine and this goes back here so this air is coming to the oil cooler and yeah of course it's not that great to have something stuck in the oil cooler but it's better rather than having it stuck in the engine let's go and have a look why you need to reinforce the fuselage you removed something which was helping to to have that or just because of the cargo so yes, for the cargo the nets, nets. Yeah, ah, i yeah, see yeah. i see they should should be strong in mm -hmm. case of something uh, when pilot or something mm -hmm. balance to the front or to the back should should uh, be strong mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and these windows are they going to be covered from inside or normally you normally we change the windows and we put the carbon fiber but i think the client don't want mm -hmm. he wants to keep it maybe in case he wants to come back to the passenger version <laughs> but that's a lot but of work this is, this is not an issue because we remove the window himself and we put a, a cover with carbon mm -hmm. fiber if one day someone needs to it just take off mm -hmm. the bolts and put the window. Mm, he decided to keep it, yeah. This is for the lights and the smoke boxes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Never being on the wing of Saab. This used to be a VIP passenger version, but now it's converted to a cargo aeroplane so as i was told by the maintenance personnel these kind of spars are installed to reinforce the whole structure and it will be installed all over the fuselage also the new ventilation system and of course 
these windows, they could be replaced to a plexiglass cover. This window is consisting of three layers and they are not glued up together. They are just pressed by this rubber seal over here. Just make it simple. Saab 2000 is equipped with an engine which is producing 4,000 horsepower compared to 1,500 horsepower which Saab 340 can produce per engine. System. LPV system, uh -huh. yeah. what avionics is that? It's a Collins Proline. Proline, uh huh. What does it take to make an LPV upgrade to this aeroplane? We have uh, these control heads, then it's uh, computers. So it's two control heads and uh, two computers, and then two GPS antenna. Then we uh, integrated with a UV system. And to get an upgrade, LPV upgrade time-wise, how long does it take to install everything to do the test about uh, certification? To do uh, on one aircraft, to do the installation, it's about three weeks. Mm -hmm. we'll see. And then the testing and the certification, approximately? Well, the ground test is just the uh, off date. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we normally we doing flight tests and I think it's just a couple of approaches mm -hmm. to verify everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have equipment everywhere, even under the floor. This is Christopher, he is representative of Tebe Air Maintenance. That's correct. And he will give us some insights into the aircraft maintenance. So, if you don't mind, tell me. I decided to buy this aeroplane as a private owner or as an operator. What am I gonna do for the maintenance wise next year or when is the nearest maintenance come? This is a tricky question because in the in the aviation business it's built up in different sections so for example you have the EOSA 145 the maintenance side which I work in uh, we take care of the of the maintenance that is to be performed however uh, the CAMO section is the section that is uh, keeping track of all the life and all the maintenance that's supposed to be performed on the aircraft so for example, if you're gonna buy an aircraft, I would approach the, the owner or the CAMO for the aircraft and they will um, advise you which uh, life limit components and the heavy checks that are due or how much time is left on each, on each stuff. And based on that, you can uh, calculate how much money it needs to be put into the aircraft to have it airworthy. And that it's a good idea to involve the 145, me, uh, so we can uh, give you an estimate overview of what's the situation exactly. of the aeroplane based on the combo uh, and their forecast of the maintenance for the aircraft and then we as a 145 can estimate a, a, a we, we can get a quote for the parts and the maintenance to be done on the aircraft so to say it's simple there are two different 
organizations, the maintenance and the other the organization, Yakamo, which is doing the paperwork and making order to do some work by the maintenance. Is yes. it right? That's correct. And uh, is it different when the owner is the private person or if the owner is the commercial operator of such an aeroplane? Because for small aeroplanes, and most of my viewers know that if you run it privately, you can run it behind the limits of the calendar limits or sometimes even the engine hours can be extended significantly if you operate it privately and other way around if you operate it commercially. You should have a calm on, on larger aircrafts. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some exceptions, but in, in general, you should have a combo that take care of, of the planning of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's clear. So if you buy this aeroplane and own it privately, you still have to have the camo. And does it happen often that camo do the exceptions or mistakes in their documents? Let's say not your camo, but if you accept an aeroplane from another camo organization. Uh, for example, um, if you if you look at this aircraft, this um, aircraft from uh, I would say early nineties. This is a Saab 340. It's been uh, been here a while. Uh, of course, there are human errors within both maintenance and planning. So when you do a, an acceptance inspection on, on this type of aircraft, it's important to look very thorough on the paperwork, but also on the technical uh, side on the aircraft. But due to it's probably had a couple of different operators, different operators work in different ways. Sometimes there are minor uh, mistakes sneaking into the paperwork mm -hmm. uh, and depending on where the mistake lies it's more important uh, to keep track of uh, the life limited parts because if you don't have the, the proper paperwork or paperwork at all the parts need to be replaced to make sure the aircraft is airworthy and that could be costly so to say if you lose the paperwork for the engine does it have to be overhauled or some inspection can reproduce the if you if you lose the paperwork in total, then you have to scrap out the engine. Mm -hmm. There is not enough to do an inspection, and it's probably not enough to to do an overhaul because it's lacking. The engine itself has its own life and its own logbook back to birth, and controlling various of the components within the engine. So that particular document is more, even more important than others. That is why all documents are stored in the proper way, in the proper place for each particular aeroplane and That's correct. like this. Can we have a look at the example of the camo order and the like uh, maintenance report which has been accomplished, which has been finished? If you look at this for example, uh, the camo have issued a various of tasks to be done and uh, there is a reference to the manual, the TC holder manual and we go and, and do this particular task and we have a license engineer signing it off and once it's done this is a lot of different tasks that are issued to this uh, aircraft mm -hmm. for example and, and this task has been in, identified as a critical task and requires um, AAE inspection which uh, means that uh, independent uh, license engineer need to inspect it separately mm -hmm. make sure that the system is fully functional and uh, safe for the in intended function mm -hmm. how often do you do these deep inspections like i see that the aeroplane has its uh, flaps off and ailerons off and the horizontal sorry yeah horizontal and vertical stabilizers off how often do you have to bring Saab for such an inspection? It's, it's, it's very different, but Saab is the build up in, in section. Some tasks are based on flight time, some tasks are based on um, cycles. Uh, and as I said, some of the life limited parts are living its own life, disregard of the aircraft. So you need to combine the life limited components and the aircraft and put it together into a work package. But for example, you have various of maintenance done every two year, every four year, every 4,000 flight hour, every 8,000 flight hour, every 6,000 uh, flight cycles, every 12,000 uh, flight cycles, and uh, well, very much more, but those are the bigger packages. What are the most adventurous 
tasks you had to do regarding the aeroplane like conversion or some big repair after an incident or accident what is the most adventurous for yourself at, the, at this shop we are doing very different type of work Our regular maintenance all the regular stuff inspection we also do service bulletins and stcs but we also do major repairs for example we have done uh, larger skin repairs we replace big section of, of the fuselage mm -hmm. we are um, replacing parts of the engine hot sections pdbs uh, we also developed uh, within our company a um, cargo conversion program for um, the 340 uh, but we also developed uh, the same uh, cargo concept for the south 2000 mm -hmm. which is rather big and we also developed a lpv um, landing system for the south 2000 which is very recently approved, both EASA and FR. We do a lot of different maintenance here, but those are the maybe bigger pieces. I think you are not there far from starting reproducing subs from the scratch. <laughs> <laughs> you can say so. Yeah. And I wish you good luck with that because the airplane is very good. Why did it have to be done? What happened to the skin? Was it some dent damage or the corrosion? We have various, for example, we had a 2000 with a nacelle skin replacement, which means you had to replace the, the full skin. And on the 2000, it's rather big, and that was due to corrosion. If an aeroplane came here for this 2000, 4000, some thousand hours inspection or years inspection, in average, how much time does it have to spend in the maintenance facility? Ooh, it's also, it's, it's, it's very depending on the condition and mainly I would say where the aircraft is operating. If it's operating um, over mainland or if it's um, over or close to um, sea and salt water. Aircraft over mainland have minor issues with corrosion but uh, the, the one that's operating in sea areas have a lot of more corrosion issues. But everything in between maybe 800 to maybe two, three thousand man hours on a uh, mid-sized turboprop aircraft. Here is um, our Facebook page. You will find a lot of interesting things on Facebook page of TB Air Maintenance. A lot of uh, behind the scenes and very interesting things to see. As an example, I'm establishing part 145 in my airline. Where do I send my mechanics? Where do I send my personnel to train to be able to work on Saab? That's a tricky question, but I have the answer for you. We work together with Angel Training, so we have a training on site here uh, with the uh, approved uh, 147 training, but also the practical training on the aircraft together with Angel Training to get approved uh, engineers. It's not as simple as I thought. It's very tricky. Thank you very much, Christopher, for the sightseeing tour around your maintenance organization. It was a pleasure to deal with you and I wish you all the best. Most I, welcome. I'll see you soon next time when we are here with our Saab 340 for the maintenance and maybe Saab 2000. That's my dream. You're welcome back.